that's kind of small. Yikes. Hey everybody, RuneScape Historian here back with a new video, and today we are going to be talking about the hand cannon. Now the hand cannon, unlike Storm of Armadil and Karasi spec, was not seen as inherently overpowered upon release, and let me tell you why. So starting right off, you can see it has a ranged accuracy bonus of 90, matching the rune crossbow. But the thing is, the rune crossbow could be combined with the Zami book or other offhands to increase that ranged accuracy bonus, making it edge out the hand cannon. On top of this, it was slightly faster and, with the pairing of Dragonstone Bolt E, could hit well into the 60s very easily. All while the hand cannon struggled most of the time to even hit the mid-50s with its special attack. The best thing I could liken it to at this point in the game was a god sword without the special attack, as far as damage anyways. Where it did start to outshine the rune crossbow though was with the regular hits, you see, because the hand cannon shots were very, very cheap, dropping in a quantity of 100 at a time from Chaos Dwarf Cannoneers. And with the range strength of 150 compared to the Dragonstone Bolt E's 117, the hand cannon's regular attacks benefited from that extra 33 range strength, despite the speed difference. Another aspect where the hand cannon shined, especially a few weeks after the release when the hand cannon price had dropped significantly, as well as its ammo, the hand cannon shot, was simply how cost effective it was with a decent fire making level. The hand cannon would see wide use due to this aspect, by high level players and mid tier players alike. You gotta think around this time the main weapons for rangers were the dark bow, but dragon arrows were around 3k a piece at this point, or Dragonstone Bolts E, but those were 4 to 5,000 GP per bolt, very expensive. Whereas with the hand cannon, the hand cannon shots were dropped 100 at a time and were pretty common. So really the only main cost you had to worry about with the hand cannon was, well, the hand cannon exploding on you. When I was researching this, it immediately brought back memories of having to take like two or three hand cannons to tormented demons just in case the first one blew up and you weren't standing there kicking the tormented demon or other boss. This hand cannon explosion had its very own animation and would even have an increased chance of happening if you use the special attack. According to the RuneScape knowledge base at the time, this was a 20% higher explosion rate for using the special attack. The special attack, known as aimed shot, would greatly increase a player's accuracy and greatly improve the chance of them hitting an opponent. It also had a pretty decent delay, but also benefited from this delay because you could stack two decently high hits at the same time with the delayed special attack on somebody in PvP scenarios. On its release of September 9th, 2009, and for a couple days after, there was a PvP glitch where if you had like five, six people or more, or even, you know, two or three, it's just most people did it with five or six, and you all specced the same target at the same time, even in single way combat, all the hits would stack up, allowing you to effectively jump on someone without being in multi. And with the increased accuracy of that special attack I talked about earlier, it could hit through things such as Bando, Sparrows, and other armors at the time with pretty good ease. This led to most of the time guaranteeing a kill, as long as you had enough people that is. This was also around the time of the PvP Worlds update with the EP system, which is why you see people getting dropped in Bandos, Darox, Varax, etc. And the killer only getting like rune legs, for example, and some other junk. It was like generated loot. And of course, hindsight is always 2020. but I would like to think if I was in these situations, just like many of you probably, you know, like if I was in this situation, I would do this and this, when in reality we might have not done anything. But I would like to say, I saw like six or seven people lining up with hand cannons and I like kind of knew about the glitch, I'd be like, hell no. I would teleport. I would be like, no. Of course, most of these people, because this is probably on like the first or second day of the hand cannon release because they were pretty common and they weren't really too high of a price upon release because of that. Of course, most of these people that are getting piled on probably don't even realize the glitch until it happens to them. That's how new this was at the time. And I mean, the hits are pretty insane, but if you take the glitch and just look at the regular mechanics of the hand cannon, all it reminds me of is a god sword without the special attack. That's it. So I just don't see it as being super OP, just like the Karasi and Storm of Armadil. Some of you guys might disagree. If you do, uh, tell me why. Now, that's not to say it maybe wasn't OP at certain combat brackets, like 
in the other clip where the dude's like 60 combat with it. I could see that being OP because you could just stack the uh, special attack with the delay with the regular hit and practically two hit somebody on the same game tick. But other than that, as far as like high levels of doing it, I just do not see how it could be too overpowered. It's like a worse ballista. But I mean, at the time, it was one of the better options for ranged PvP and it definitely had a place back then. I've seen many people requesting that the hand cannon be brought into old school, but honestly, I don't think it has a place. And let me tell you, why. The heavy ballista that was released with Monkey Madness 2 has higher range accuracy, 125 to be exact, versus 90, and also has the exact same range strength at 150 with Dragon Javelins versus the hand cannon with the hand cannon shots. They are essentially the same weapon, only the heavy ballista is going to be better because it doesn't explode. Of course, it would be great for nostalgic purposes, but as far as practicality and place in the game, I just don't see it. Going back to the footage though, what strikes me as extremely interesting is that in most of these clips you see people who wouldn't exactly be considered nowadays like good PKers or like people that PK on a daily basis. Like there was a Max main using an Obsidian Maul, guy with an untrimmed cooking cape. Just look at the gear some of these people were wearing. Uh, it's in stark contrast today when you go to PvP worlds, most of the people know exactly what they're doing. And that's more just a product of the time. Many players didn't really know a whole lot about PvP and what to do, whereas you go in now and you just get stomped if you're trying to learn. This clip was especially funny because this guy in Barracks, I guess, was talking trash to him and he just gets dropped. And yeah, the commentary is pretty hilarious. Everyone's laughing and having a good time. This person right here just got dropped for full Varax, tries to eat. There's no way to eat out of that. And there's also no need for a teleblock because of how quickly this happens. There's not really much chance to really respond. Maybe people got more uh, adapted to it as the glitch went on because most of this footage was posted September 12th and I know people can hold footage and stuff. Yeah, I say no teleblocks, but that guy's trying to teleblock him. But uh, I saw multiple videos that the actual date on the clips was the 12th, like in the title where they use like the uh, Windows Movie Maker text, like with the black background at the start. They dated it September 12th and the hand cannon came out on the 9th, so the glitch had to have been happening the day of release and for a few days after it just may have taken people a little bit to catch on and figure out how to perform the glitch. That dude actually just lost Void just due to the way the death mechanics worked in PvP worlds, so that sucks. It's literally like 12 to 16 hours down the toilet. And this person, it was interesting too, if you look at the name of that person right there, Link still Link. They just got dropped for I think a D chain among some other stuff. Here in a little bit you'll see that same exact person get dropped by the same people. Like I would be so pissed. <laughs> I think it's this clip right here. Yeah, so they did throw a tele block that time and it actually landed. So there's absolutely no hope that they get away. They probably threw the tele block because this is the same person they got last time and she would know what was up. So they TB'd her and got her again for full guffins that time. So I'm looking at these clips from the old PvP worlds of these people just going bananas on everybody and PvP worlds at the time compared to nowadays on old school, it was it was bananas because of the EP system. You had to risk like, I think right around the neighborhood of maybe 50 to 100k, somewhere within that range. I cannot remember the exact amount. I know the exact amount like to get drops off of your friend was 76,000 GP, but you would have people essentially four iteming non-scold they would be sitting in a hot zone, which is in the bottom right, you see that flaming skull, and they would sit there and because they were risking, they would gain EP. The closer they got to 100%, the better drops they got off of their friends when they did the 76k trick. But anytime a PKer would show up to kill them, when they were four iteming, they would just slap on that protect item and let them kill them because there was no loss. So that's why you see so many people um, in the PvP worlds, and not everyone knew about that four item mechanic. And eventually they did make it to where you couldn't do that. So that's probably another reason you see a bunch of inexperienced people trying to PK or trying to get that drop potential because they weren't four iteming. So they were like, oh, I've got to be in a PvP hot zone. Let's slap on some PvP gear and uh, make some massive bank that way. But all in all, that EP system was pretty good at reviving the PvP scene. It did have its downsides, but I'll leave that for another video. And it was obviously one of the better options at the time for PvP based scenarios. So despite it not being inherently overpowered, Powered. If you take the glitch and bug abuse out of the equation with the PvP worlds and the piling, it wasn't inherently OP at all. It was in a pretty decent spot when it came out in 2009 of September 9th, and a lot of people will remember it pretty fondly. But that's about it for me, guys. This is RuneScape Historian checking out. Thank you guys so much for watching and the continued support, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.